Joining me today is Battleford's Lloyd Minster MP, Rosemary Falk. Thank you for taking the time here today. And obviously a very busy year, both outside your party and inside with a change of leadership. Aaron O'Toole obviously taking leadership of the Conservatives. What are your thoughts here on this new direction for the Conservative Party? It's funny you say that because leadership is something that seems like years ago that that happened, but really it was only a few months ago. You know, I'm very pleased with our leader, Aaron O'Toole, and the leadership that we have. I believe that he is doing a wonderful job. And um, even though he wasn't my first pick, um, I mean, 100% behind him. Like I said, again, I'm really impressed with his leadership. And 2020, obviously a big change in leadership, not only for the Conservative Party, but also for the United States as we look at President-elect Joe Biden. And he's already pledged stricter environmental protocols. How does the Conservative Party plan to work for Canadians' interests and partner with other leaders across the globe? You know, you bring up a very good point that I feel has been uh, really lost within the pandemic conversation. I think first and foremost, um, conservatives as well as myself, just me as my, myself as the member of parliament for Battleford's Lloydminster, 100% uh, understand and know that Canada produces some of the most ethical oil in the world. And um, some of our environmental uh, restrictions and regulations are some of the strictest in the world. So I think it is so important that we make sure that we are able to get out our energy, and not just oil, right? It, it, different types of uh, resources. We can talk about forestry, we can talk about our mining. Canada is home to a wealth of resources from coast to coast, and it is uh, important for us. It should be top of mind to make sure that we can continue. Uh, and I would, I would argue even in more of a capacity that uh, that is going on right now, definitely um, get that, those resources out and uh, sent off to other places that need them or even for our own use. Now, bring it back to Battleford's Lloyd Minster. When you ran for re-election, you said your biggest priority was crime. Are you still working on that front? And what do you continue to do when it comes to rural crime here in this riding? Well, I think uh, in regards to rural crime in specific, it's definitely something that the federal liberals are not taking as important of issue as it should be. I've spoken to many, many, many constituents who have had lived experiences with um, either right there happening in front of them or coming home and seeing that they have been victims of crime. And I think it's top, it should be top of mind, especially for the federal government, in this case, the Liberals, to make sure that we have tough, tough penalties for criminals, but also too, it's unacceptable for anybody to feel uh, not safe or unsafe in their own space. And that's, and that's just unacceptable. And you mentioned that it felt like such a long time ago, the Conservative Party was electing a new leader. And I feel like the main reason for that is COVID. And we are seeing some vaccines arriving here very soon. How does the Conservative Party plan to continue to fight this disease? And what are their priorities when it comes to this vaccine rollout? It's important to note that this whole year has somewhat of been a blur. And I don't, I don't think that's just from my perspective, but also just... Um, you know, whether it's small business owners, whether it's students, whether it's parents, uh, for everybody. And I think something that I know I'm very disappointed with uh, the federal government is the fact that they chose to prorogue parliament. So they prorogued parliament because of the WEE scandal and uh, to cover up for their own, their own ethical um, blunders. And we're put in this position, put, they put Canadians in this position of, for example, not having rapid tests. I mean, they did not bring forward uh, rapid testing or the ideas of rapid testing or the talk or the procurement of it until we started press, press, pressuring them uh, in the House of Commons, which would have been in September. So it's absolutely unacceptable that this government um, continues to lag behind, whether it is in rapid tests, whether it's in procurement, whether it's in, uh, you know, programs and assistance that Canadians need uh, or needed and continue to need. I know there's been plenty of times that the opposition, not just our party, but the opposition bench as a whole has brought forward ideas uh, to strengthen uh, programs for Canadians because at the end of the day Canadians deserve the best even through these uncertain kind of chaotic times. Now as we plan to flip the calendar here from 2020 to 2021 what is your biggest priority as a member of parliament? 
Uh, continue to keep representing and listening to the people of Battleford Zoyminster, number one. Also to making sure that uh, their voices are heard. Uh, I'm the conduit to make sure that their voices are heard, uh, not only in the caucus room, but also on the floor of the House of Commons. And, um, you know, I just like a lot of people, I, I've I'm at home in the riding more than I normally would be. Uh, definitely hearing, and I just want people to know too, not only am I hearing the frustrations and um, the uncertainty and anxiety that comes with what we're in right now with COVID, but I also am living that as well. I do have three small kids and I went, I just like everybody else, I did go through the phase of having them home, schooling at home, having no internet because we have no rural broadband or terrible infrastructure for rural broadband. So I absolutely understand the frustrations, but um, I do want people to know that I will be, I will continue to be that conduit for them. So their frustrations and their concerns can be heard uh, on the floor of the House of Commons. All right. Appreciate your time here today and all the best in the new year.